The count is T minus nine minutes now and counting. Just nine minutes, uh, in fact, uh, it's just eight minutes now until the uh, scheduled launch of the Apollo 8. And uh, we hear from Mission Control that everything is go for this flight. If I could very quickly show you the magnitude of this flight, I'd like to do that. If I could give a warning to, uh, to my uh, stalwart director, uh, Freddie Stolmack, down below here somewhere, I'd like to show you something. Over here on this globe of the moon, of the Earth, man, in the highest he's ever been off the surface of the Earth, uh, in the flight of Gemini 11, was 850 miles high. And by the scale of this globe, that would be three quarters of an inch three quarters of an inch off of that surface. You could use this little model just to kind of show you that. Just that, three quarters of an inch. Now, if this were all in scale, this flight would be taking man this far. And I'm sorry, Freddie, I'm going right out of your lighting and everything else here because it goes, it would go 30 feet instead of three quarters of an inch. 30 feet out into space to reach the moon. What a flight. What a thing this flight of Apollo 8 will be. And what a remarkable achievement for the space program. When you consider that we really got started only seven years ago with the flight of the first Mercury on a Redstone rocket. And now if I can take just a second, I'll show you where we are here as we watch this flight. We are here uh, three miles from the launch pad, pad 39A, a moon port here at Merritt Island near Cape Kennedy, the Kennedy Spacecraft Center, Space Center. Over there, perhaps you can see, well, that body of water out there is incidentally is the barge canal that brings these great beasts here from uh, their manufacturing point in Louisiana, Michaud, Louisiana. They go into a huge building over here at the left in volume, the largest building in the world, as large as the Pentagon and the a Chicago merchandise mart put together. It's the vehicle assembly building, and uh, uh, that's three miles as we are from the launch site, and it is where the launch control center is, where the launch is controlled until the liftoff has been completed uh, when uh, control shifts to the manned space center in Houston, Texas. We're looking out southeast, roughly, and that will be the direction of the flight as it takes off and uh, moves on up into space. Now, what you're going to see in these first few minutes, and it's T minus six and a half minutes and counting now, very shortly we're we'll going to go to Mission Control and listen to Mission Control's Jack King uh, reporting on the first stages of the flight and the countdown, too. You'll see the liftoff, and as we told you before, there's almost nine seconds, 8.9 seconds before the uh, the Saturn actually lifts off of the pad after ignition. You will then see it start a roll program in about 11 seconds. It begins to turn slightly, and you'll see the big black and white markings and the red lettering on the Saturn begin to turn a little bit as that roll begins. That's to get it right into the right azimuth, and then. Uh, at uh, 17, 1 minute and 17 seconds, it goes through the maximum dynamic pressures on the, on the launch uh, phase. Now let's listen to uh, mission control. Mission control at 5 minutes, 30 seconds, and our count is still go at this time. We've just completed further status checks here in the firing room at the control center. Here in the control center, we've had our status checks, and uh, the range has given a go, as, as has the uh, launch director, Rocco Patron. We are still counting, and we are go coming up on the five-minute mark in the count. Mark, T-minus, five minutes and counting, T-minus five. At this point, the Apollo access arm should be coming back, and it is now moving back at the 320-foot level to its fully retracted position, high atop the tower at pad A. Our countdown still proceeding at this time at the four minute mark in the countdown. The overall count will be turned over to the launch vehicle test conductor. Ray Roberts, the launch vehicle test conductor, will conduct the final four minutes as all uh, different aspects uh, move over to the launch vehicle test conductor's channel. The uh, automatic sequence, as reported, will come in at the three minute and six second mark in the countdown. We're standing by at four minutes, 16 seconds and counting. This is launch control. 
As we were telling you, at, at 1 minute and 17 seconds into the flight, that's when you see the great contrail begin as, uh, the, as the spacecraft uh, begins to emerge from the deep atmosphere of Earth. And it's called an area of maximum dynamic pressure, too, uh, when the maximum buffeting takes place and uh, when the stresses and strains on this big 363 feet of vehicle uh, are the most intense. Uh, at that point, uh, the big engines, uh, the five engines of the, uh, of the first stage are gulping 3,000 gallons of fuel a second. Here's Jack King again. 30 seconds and counting. We have completed our communications checks with the Apollo 8 astronauts in the cabin, and the communications are go. Coming up shortly, we'll uh, be in the automatic sequence where we have a completely automatic uh, checkout of the launch vehicle from uh, three minutes and six seconds down. We have firing command. The firing command is in. We are now on the automatic sequence, T minus three minutes and counting. During this period, once we do get the firing command, the various tanks within the three stages of the Saturn V launch vehicle begin to pressurize. They all must be under pressure before we're ready to launch. We have a sequence status board here in the control room that will give us readouts on the overall status of the space vehicle as we reach the terminal phases in the countdown. Now two, two minutes, 32 seconds, and counting. Our status board indicates that all aspects are ready, instrument unit is ready, spacecraft ready, final check of the emergency detection system, that ready light also on. First stage preparations are completed. Two minutes, 15 seconds and counting, the tanks continuing to pressurize in the vehicle. Not as many reports coming now as we all stand by on the launch vehicle test conductor's channel. Coming up on the two-minute mark on the Apollo 8 mission. Two minutes and counting. T-minus two minutes and counting. We are still proceeding. We now have uh, recorded that the uh, first stage uh, liquid oxygen tank has been pressurized, and the pressure is still building up. One minute, 45 seconds and counting. We have a vehicle weighing 6.2 million pounds on the pad. Interestingly enough, some 1,200 pounds of that weight is just frost on the side of the vehicle created by the extremely low temperatures of the propellants. Coming up in 90 seconds.